So let's start at the beginning. Uh, I've talked to you many times about how you got your start in this crazy business. You were at Hanna-Barbera. Um, right. A friend helped you get a job at Hanna-Barbera. And you moved from like track reader. It threw me, it threw me into the sound department. Dumped you into it. <laughs> he, he thought I was an animator. A, a friend had recommended me for an interview and he asked me to bring my artwork. And I, of course I had none. <laughs> yeah. Was Star Trek one of the first yeah. uh, features? Yeah. How did, and you were on dialogue on that one. How did that whole happen? ADR. Happen? Um, uh, there was an editor who moved on from Hanna-Barbera, Bill Kowalczuk, who is also a mentor of mine who would feed me reels of his. I don't know if he fed them to me because he just wanted me to do his work for him or if he genuinely wanted, but he would critique my work. I'd stay after school, yeah. I'd edit these cartoon sounds and I'd show him the reel the next morning and he'd give me, he was a good mentor. I don't mean That's to good. throw him under the bus. No, no, I don't. And um, he decided he wanted bigger and better things and he moved over to Paramount Studios. Mm -hmm. And that same year, this is 1977, correct me if I'm wrong, I saw Star Wars and the light bulb went off that yeah. I could make a career out of sound. So I called Bill and I said, hey, I got to get out of this hole. I, I want to do live <laughs> action sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like the real guys, like Ben Burt. And uh, he got me an interview with the head of the sound department mm -hmm. who gave me a gig as an apprentice to John Hanley, who was their ADR supervisor and was working on Star Trek, the motion picture. Yeah. And as fate would have it, he fell ill, and because I was his apprentice in training, I was the only one that knew where all his sounds were. Oh, wow. And I got to work with Robert Wise yeah. because I was the only person who knew how to finish the show. Right, right. And then from that, you guys, uh, I think Raiders wasn't that far uh, behind yeah. that. A year which, and a half later. I mean, man, to go from you know, Hanna-Barbera to Star Trek and Raiders, that's pretty, that's pretty insane. <laughs> Um, I, I count myself as one of the luckiest individuals in Hollywood because of this incredible good fortune falling in my lap. I mean, yeah. who goes from being a Gumby at a, at a TV assembly line sound department <laughs> to working on Star Trek and then Raiders yeah. of the Lost Ark, all through no particular uh, um, acumen yeah. of mine. Yeah. It just all kind of happened. Whereas I, I kind of sought after you guys. I mean, I was thrilled to be there, but I, it's still the same sort of situation. It's like, how did I get here? I'm working with, you know, these guys who did all this. Well, but we had work. heard about you. You yeah. had been working, I think, for Gordy or somebody like we've, that. We've, t we've had this story. Yeah, I'd been around and I'd been trying to sort of, you know, get my foot in the door with you guys. I had yeah, originally but there were thought, very few people yeah. in those days like yourself who had experience with modern sound collecting in libraries, yeah. and that was something we wanted. Your work with Joe Dante, of course, is 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 a lot of fun. Like Gremlins, nine movies. God, yeah. so many great. I still talk to him to this day. Yeah, uh, Gremlins in particular. Uh, you, yeah. Richard, Richard did the um, sort of hard effects, as we would say, and then you did the yeah. the, the creature stuff. And yeah, I, I think. Go ahead. No, well, I think he, he, he threw what was clearly the most impossible task on the film at me. <laughs> <laughs> Steven Soderbergh's film Kafka, you went off yeah. as sort of, how would you describe sort of like a second unit sound recordist yeah. kind of guy? Yeah. And, yeah. and you just, I just remember you coming back and putting a stack of debt tapes on my desk. So how soon can you uh, get through all this? <laughs> <laughs> I went crazy. Uh, I, I was just determined to be the the sort of consummate um, Walter Murch. Sure. I, I, I wanted Kafka because Stephen, like Joe, like George Miller, like Denis Villeneuve, these are filmmakers who recognize the value not only of sound to their films, but in fresh and original sound. And um, Stephen was willing to support that. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about uh, the Green Mile also, because that mm. one of the most subtle things that you did that was just so effective uh, was recording the Foley on the actual sets, on the actual location. Right. Um, yeah. Could you talk a bit about how that happened in that whole process? Because yeah. uh, I don't well, think that's ever been done before, as far as I know. I don't think it has either. Yeah. It, it, a unique set of circumstances collided. I knew that this was going to be a very quiet, subtle movie. Yes. It's not going to have, there's no big gun battles and there's no spaceships. And so the, the joy, the nuance of this track was going to be in the delicate stuff, which was mostly Foley. And I thought, 
this needs to go the, the, the extra mile, if you will. Uh, it can't just be the usual Foley. So I started casting prisons. I actually found uh, an abandoned prison downtown that we could set up a remote recording rig and we could perform or re-perform all the action live to, uh, to a monitor in a real acoustic space in real jail cells with real metal bars and real concrete floors. Um, and, and when I pitched this to the producer, he, he said, well, Mark, great, love the idea, but did you know that um, not only did we build our sets to spec, which means they're not the usual sets made out of paper mache and cardboard. Those are real metal bars and that's real concrete floors, he said, and they're still standing on the sound stage. Would that be of value to me? And I'm like, what? You know, the, 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 the steam whistles go off. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So you're working on Dune right now. Yeah. The yeah. new Dune. I know you probably can't talk about too much about it but I'm sure yeah. that you've had some recording adventures and things like that. Anything you can share with us on any uh, of the of the work that you've, you've begun would be appreciated. Well, um, of course, Dune has a lot of sand. <laughs> I was going to say, you're, you're out, I see you out in the desert with a microphone recording sand, yeah. <laughs> We've done a, a number of trips out to the desert to capture all manner of um, sand textures that include esoteric things like sand dune groans. I appreciate you coming. I hope we can uh, have you back on because there's still so many things. Yeah, let's, talk let's about. I'd love to talk about, um, there's a couple of films I'd love to talk about. Warrior. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Sorry, I just lost all my microphones. Uh -oh. I'd love to talk about um, Mad Max and Blade yes, Runner. Yes, we will, we will. Well, we're sort of, we've sort of gotten into the sort of the middle of your timeline. We'll yeah, we'll, finish, we'll do the next one with the, the we back. We got to the early 2000s. Exactly. We have another 20 years to go. 